In this video, we're going to talk about how to factor a certain type of polynomial. The polynomials in this video are going to specifically be trinomials, which means they'll have one, two, three terms. And these guys will be quadratics, which means you'll have an x squared as your leading term here. Uh, and as a, an extra restriction, we're not just going to look at any quadratic that's a trinomial, but the ones in this particular video are going to start off with a coefficient of 1. 1x one squared plus something x plus something. In uh, an upcoming video, we'll talk about how you can have a leading coefficient that's different than 1. Now, this is one particular topic that if you ask a few different instructors, they might all teach this in a different way. There are a couple different methods to factor guys like this. I have my own personal preference, but you'll likely find other instructors who have other preferences. So the way we're gonna look at in this video is using something called trial and error. Now, it's better than it sounds. I know when you think trial and error, it just sounds like guess and check. And in some sense it is, but it's more of an educated guess. Uh, I will say that on the whole, you know, as you move past algebra to calculus and whatnot, wh whenever we have to factor quadratics like this, this is typically what most students tend towards. It, it's a little quicker, but you do have to think a little bit more about it. Now, um, even though this is my preference, in the upcoming videos, we'll also show you the other method, which is called factor by grouping, which you can also do with these trinomials here. So uh, anyways, um, you just might want to check w with what technique your instructor uses. But in this video, we're going to start with trial and error. So he here's, here's basically the idea behind it. Um, if you have something that looks like x squared plus bx plus c, right, something like this then if it's going to factor, we actually know the basic format of, of the factorization. For example, if you're going to have two binomials that FOIL to give you this guy, then you can look at these to kind of tell you what your first, outer, and inner, and last need to be. In other words, you can kind of see what it, what it needs to be in order to factor like this. For example, if your uh, leading term, the F, the blank times blank is going to give you x squared, really the only thing you could possibly have would be an x and an x. And, and in fact, that's the case. So we'll start by putting an x and an x because those are the only two things you could multiply to get x squared. But then you'll have two numerical values for the n. So for these, I'm just going to put random numbers. I'm going to put x plus m times x plus n. All right, now let's, let's actually FOIL this out with the letters M and N, and then we're going to uh, relate this back to our original polynomial. X times X would be X to the second. X times N and X times M, when you add them, you would get M plus N X's total. You get NX plus MX, so together you get M plus N. And then lastly, you'll get M times N, for the L or the last. All right, now look here. I'm going to match these up here. Uh, here's an X squared that gets matched up with X squared. Here's an M plus N X, and that matches up with BX. And then we get M times N, which matches up with C. So we, we see actually what these numbers M and N have to satisfy. Uh, basically, M plus N the two numbers in your factorization have to add to the middle number and they have to multiply to be the ending number. And so basically what you do with, when you're trying to factor a quadratic that looks like this, you're going to make a list of all the terms that will multiply to C and then scan that list to just see if any of these guys also happen to add up to B. And if you can find something that fits that template, then you can factor it. And, and basically what you have to do is run through a few options because take a number like 12. Well, you can multiply a lot of different numbers to give you 12. You might have one times 12. You might have two times six. You might have three times four. And so that's why we call it trial and error because you do have to run through a, a few different cases. So, so I'll tell you what, let me, um, let me erase this and we'll try an example and this will probably make a little bit more sense 
as we as we try an actual example let's say we had x squared plus 12 x plus 35 now the first thing I want to point out is that these three terms do not have any common factors so this guy cannot be factored using GCFs like we recently studied so it must factor another way so if this factors I'll, I'll put two empty blanks here and FOIL FOIL should give me this polynomial so what times what would give me x squared it has to be x times x now for the last two numbers that go here and here this is really where the the math comes in so whatever those two numbers are they're gonna have to multiply to 35 so what I'll typically do is I'll make a quick little chart and I'll make up all the I'll write down all the products that could give me 35 like 1 times 35 and 5 times 7 I think that's that's it so now I'm gonna scan this list right here I'm gonna look down this list and I'm gonna see do any of these pairs or could any of these pairs add up to 12 well 1 and 35 they couldn't be combined added or subtracted in any way to give me 12 so that's not that's not the pair that I want but then I see 5 and 7 and I say hey 5 times 7 does multiply to 35 but it could also add to 12 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try a 5 and a 7 and again I'm, I'm, tr I'm doing trial and error I'm looking at all these different pairs and then I'm gonna see now if I can fit the signs a plus or a minus or something like that um, in, a, in such a way that it will give me this polynomial if I foiled these two guys now um, to, to look at the signs here's what I typically do I start by looking at the ending number in our case we have a positive 35 well the only way you can get a positive 35 is by having a minus and a minus or a plus and a plus that's the only way you can multiply to get a positive a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative but notice if you had a negative times a negative they would add to be a negative value not a positive value like the 12x that we're wanting so I think let's try a plus and a plus and then let's try it trial and error let's see let's see what this would look like if we foiled it out um, x times x would be x squared x times 7 is 7x x times 5 is 5x those are like terms that add to 12x and 5 times 7 is 35 and so we see we get the same result and so we factored it this right here would be the factorization or this would be x squared plus 12x plus 35 in factored form and so this is how we do trial and error this is what we do um, so let, let's wrap up this video with one more quick example um, before we hop into this one let me just make one quick remark uh, you have to be a little careful because you could actually make more work for yourself than is necessary uh, th and this might differ from the way some instructors teach this but I, I teach my students to not worry too much about the positives and negatives closer to the end uh, and closer into when you're checking your answer and, and I'll explain why um, here if we start this off the same way x squared minus 6x plus 8 then I'm gonna see okay what times what would give me x squared minus 6x plus 8 well I think the only way to get x squared is to have x times x just like last time and now I have to write down everything that can multiply to 8 but if I'm being technically correct about it 1 times 8 is 8 2 times 4 is 8 negative 1 times negative 8 is 8 and negative 2 times negative 4 is also positive 8 and so if I wrote down every plus or minus possibility I would get a long list and 8 doesn't even have that many imagine a number like 24 or 36 or something like that you'd have a whole page full of options so the way I usually teach this and by the way if you do it this way that's fine uh, like I have no no problems with this but I'm just saying it might just take you a second longer and you might have more cases to consider um, even if this had been a minus 8 I would still only put just the uh, factors of just 8 and like I said we'll worry about the signs at the end so now here, here's the way I think about the next part 
I look through this list and I see which of these, if I could have the signs be any way that I want them, could possibly add up to a negative six. Well, one and eight, I don't care if you have positive one and negative eight or negative one and negative eight, or I don't care what signs you have, there's no way this could combine to give you a six. You're either gonna get seven or nine, maybe positive, maybe negative, but it's not gonna be six. But two and four, on the other hand, if the signs were right, that could give you a negative six. So I'm gonna put a two and a four, and please hear me when I say this, I'm not even saying that two and four are the positive correct numbers for my final answer. I'm saying that they're likely candidates to be part of the factored form of this polynomial. And that's so much quicker because why waste your time looking at all these options with positives and negatives and all this kind of stuff if they, if they can't even remotely or even possibly be part of the factored form. So anyway, once I have the two and the four in there, now it's time to get down to the fine details. These guys need to multiply to be positive eight, but add to be negative six. So how is that possible? Well, to multiply to positive eight, it either needs to be a plus and a plus, but that doesn't work with having this be a minus. So I'm actually gonna take those out, and let me actually try minus and minus. Negative two times negative four is positive eight, and negative four x and negative two x do in fact make negative six x. So I got my final answer, and we factored x squared minus six x plus eight. Now don't be discouraged if you do what we just did and, and you get down to the finish line and you've tried every possible option, you may not have something that multiplies to what you want and adds to what you want. And if that's the case, you get what's known as a prime polynomial that cannot be factored. We'll talk about prime polynomials in another video, but just be aware that you're not guaranteed to be able to factor every polynomial. So like I said, this is my preferred way of factoring trinomials like this, but it's not the only way and it's totally fine if your instructor does by grouping or list out all the options, positives or negatives. This is just one of those things where there's a lot of different options to achieve the same goal.